Hooray Todd episode is the first time in BoJack Horseman that Todd gets the real focus and attention he deserves. Though he's had big roles in his misadventures before this, this episode is the first to put a spotlight on not only his day-to-day -day life, but his tendencies to put others before himself. Todd generally avoids conflict and is a natural caregiver, and this episode highlights why these attributes can both be his biggest strength and most frustrating weakness. And through this particularly messy misadventure, Todd learns the value in living for himself when he needs to. He's the most giving man the world has ever known. The episode begins with Todd rushing to hit the finale triangle ding for an orchestra at the Hollywood Bowl. He makes it just in time. The band gathers at a bar after the show, and his bandmates gossip with rumors that they've heard about Todd. I heard before he played triangle, he was in a prison gang. I heard he was a tech millionaire. There is a rumor he is a foreign prince. These are all, of course, true rumors about Todd. Back in season one, after going to prison for running Boreana's house, Todd tried to join two separate prison gangs. In season three, he briefly became a tech millionaire after selling his rideshare app, Cabra Cadabra, and in season two, he accidentally switches places with the Prince of Cordovia for a day, due to their uncannily similar appearance. But then we learn things we didn't know about Todd, as one of his bandmates gushes about Todd's profound effect on his life, calling him the most giving man the world has ever known. He saved my pregnant daughter from drowning in a shipwreck. Then he delivered her baby while they rode on the back of a piece of driftwood. This sets up not only the focus of the entire episode, but firmly reestablishes the things we've seen from Todd primarily in the background of the series up to this point, that he is incredibly giving and selfless, rarely thinking of himself. There are countless examples of Todd trying to help everyone else to his own detriment. As a teenager, Todd and Emily started dating each other. When Emily was ready to have sex, Todd was clearly uncomfortable, but reluctantly agreed because he wanted Emily to be happy in their relationship. I don't want to peer pressure you. No, I'm ready for sexual situations. After Todd appears to be launching into a successful career writing his new rock opera, he immediately signs Princess Carolyn's documents locking her in as his agent without a second thought. He then brings her into his scheme, turning Bojack's house into a tourist trap called Boreana's house, and cuts her in on the profit, which of course sends him to prison. Mr. Boreana's, I presume. Um, would you like the Boreable head? The aforementioned prison gang situation is another great example. Todd is wooed by two prison gangs in season one, but he doesn't want to upset either of them, since they both really like him. Rather than choose, Todd sets up a two dates at the same time situation, and tries to keep them both happy to very nearly deadly consequences. When Todd is nearly robbed by the celebrity stealing club, he actually helps them open up and reflect on themselves. I took my mask off. Did you? Because I think you're still wearing a mask. Oh. The girls, of course, take advantage of this and knock Todd out when his guard is down. After Bojack fires Diane and is tasked to write his book himself, Todd readily jumps in to write part of the book for him, no questions asked, even after the terrible things Bojack had done to him that year. When Todd stumbles upon Becca, a chicken that escaped from a Chicken for Days truck, he goes far out of his way to protect her from harm, and then even goes on a daring heist to save her from an even scarier chicken farm. As I said, Todd is a natural caregiver, and there are countless examples where he prioritizes prioritizes the safety and comfort of others over himself. And this would perfectly foreshadow the career he eventually lands in most naturally, initially becoming Ruthie's nanny, and then becoming the head of daycare at the Vim agency for all of their employees' children. Todd lives up to the title, the most giving man the world has ever seen, and his lion bandmate wraps up his high praise by extending Todd the kind of love that Todd gives others. Sometimes, when that triangle part is coming up, I find myself hoping he won't show up. No man should be asked to give that much. And over the course of this day, Todd helps just about every person in his life. Hooray Todd episode focuses on a particular day that really highlights Todd's selfless giving nature. Nearly everything he does is in the aid of others, and every single pitfall he finds himself in is not his fault. It's simply a byproduct of his attempt to help people. Even in his first sequence, which is primarily about Katrina and Mr. Peanut Butter working through his potential stance on fracking, it showcases Todd thanklessly helping Mr. Peanut Butter in the background, all without saying a word. First, he gives Mr. Peanut Butter his medication wrapped in a piece of cheese, which not only does he not expect credit for, it's something he's actually chastised for. Todd, don't distract Mr. Peanut Butter with your weird pocket cheeses. Despite this, Todd goes on to set PB's place at the table and make him a themed breakfast. Katrina then tells Todd to go get Mr. Peanut Butter's sunglasses at Vim, and Todd, being Todd, accepts no problem. Which, of course, leads to the next shenanigan that Todd unwittingly gets roped into, but we'll get to that later. After Todd arrives back with PB's sunglasses, Katrina chastises him again for not signing PB's name for a package, telling him to always sign his name when asked. This leads to Todd signing PB's 
Lindsay's name on an unambiguous pro-fracking petition, cementing his position. Eventually, it comes out in the press that PB is pro-fracking. A letter signed by Mr. Peanut Butter himself in full, unambiguous support of fracking. This means two things. Katrina is furious, and Mr. Peanut Butter is very concerned that Diane is going to be mad at him. He tasks Todd with distracting Diane from seeing any of the news that day so she doesn't find out about it. Todd goes to Diane's office and distracts her. That's some good dancing, but I've got work to do and you've been dancing for 55 minutes! Before leaving, Todd actually gives Diane some great advice about writing meaningful stories to hide the important info in some hot gossip, just like he hides Mr. Peanut Butter's medicine in the cheese. He then uses this to trick Diane into testing Hollyhock and Bojack's DNA to see if it's a match, saying it belongs to Channing Tatum and a Cordovian refugee. Later in the day, Todd ends up at Channing Tatum's house as Diane confronts him about the matching DNA. Pretending to be Channing, Todd helps reaffirm to Diane that her integrity makes her great at what she does. You ask me, movie star Channing Tatum, I'd say you're exactly the kind of journalist we need in this world. When Todd heads to Vib to find Mr. Peanut Butter's sunglasses, Princess Carolyn ropes him into another subplot. She wants him to go on a date with movie star Courtney Portnoy to help her seem more down to earth and relatable. You can do that, right? You're not doing anything. Princess Carolyn, like most other people, and even like many viewers of the show prior to this episode, think that Todd doesn't have anything going on for himself, that he's able to help at their beck and call. This is the attitude Todd has met with the majority of the time, and being such a giving person, he generally obliges. This time, he actually tries to tell PC that he has the to do. I'm kind of busy today. I gotta pick up these glasses and then tonight there was this meeting I wanted to go to. Princess Carolyn ignores Todd and he of course agrees to go out with Courtney so the paparazzi can get some photos of them together. Later in the day while at lunch with Courtney, Todd simply mentions a chain restaurant and Courtney panics and leaves the lunch before it's over. Todd, I can never be your dirty peasant girl. I'm sorry. I must have gone. Unfortunately, this prevents the entire reason PC wanted Todd to go out with Courtney in the first place for the paparazzi to get those photos. And this of course course eventually gets back to PC, and she berates Todd for messing up the plan, forcing him to meet Courtney at another event. Rushing to a Shark Jacobs fashion show, Todd accidentally enters through the model entrance, sparking a massive new fashion trend, but failing to be seen with Courtney again. Now Todd has to make up for this blunder, and what was supposed to be a simple lunch with Courtney has turned into three different engagements over the course of one day. And speaking of engagements, Todd finally meets with Courtney again that night for drinks, and Todd attempts to open up to her, but she mostly ignores him, before telling the press something shocking. We shan't be breaking up. We're engaged! Hooray! I'm confused! Sadly, Todd's penchant for people-pleasing has now locked him into a sham engagement with a movie star that he has nothing in common with. In the middle of the day, Todd is chloroformed by a teenage horse named Hollyhock, who asks him to help her find Bojack to determine if he might be her father. Todd, once again, decides to help this girl that he doesn't even know, despite how insane his schedule is. Hollyhock wants to determine if her DNA matches Bojack's, and Todd just starts doing this for her. No questions asked, even though Hollyhock is fully capable of doing it herself. Now go get that DNA tested. After flubbing the first attempt because he only got Bojack's DNA, not Hollyhock's, Todd goes back to get Hollyhock's DNA and finds she hasn't cleaned Bojack's house like she promised she would. Rather than urging her to do it, Todd cleans the entire thing himself and, of course, gets no credit for it. The one thing Todd had to do all day that he didn't do himself was test Hollyhock's DNA, instead tricking Diane into testing it by telling her it's Channing Tatum and his illegitimate childs. When he finally gets the answer that the DNA matches, he goes to find Hollyhock, trekking to Bojack's, and then finding her at Channing Tatum's house. Through attempting to reveal her DNA connection to Bojack, Todd puts everyone else's well-being first. He considers that Bojack isn't ready for a serious relationship like this, and that maybe Hollyhock would be better off not being sucked into Bojack's life. So he lies to her. I got the results and it's not a match. Hollyhock, of course, discovers that Todd was lying and eventually goes back to find Bojack. Todd thought he was doing the right thing for everyone here. And from a certain perspective, looking at how Hollyhock's time in Los Angeles ends later in the season, he may have been right. Everyone's looking at you, but nobody sees you. Over the course of this insane, intertwined day of selfless giving rests some incredibly important steps for Todd. Todd's first attempt to stand up for himself to PC was a failure, but when Bojack tries to rope Todd back into his orbit initially, Todd maintains a boundary. And after all the things I did to you, I don't know how to tell Bojack, you. Bojack, we haven't talked in like a year. 
and that's actually been kind of working for me. This reluctance is a huge step for Todd, especially given how open he is to helping everyone else throughout the entire episode. But Todd still leaves the door open for Bojack a tad, thinking that he might properly apologize for the way he overlooks him. I definitely don't deserve to have a friend as amazing and generous and forgiving and thoughtful as yeah. Channing Tatum. Oh. Over the course of this episode and the series, Todd has all of these people who are willing to use him and help themselves, but they don't actually make attempts to understand him as a real person. And this is why what Courtney Portnoy says to him actually resonates so much. Do you ever feel like everyone's looking at you but nobody sees you? Yeah, that's exactly how I feel. But even this is an example of somebody refusing to see Todd for who he is and making it about themselves as she immediately writes off his commiseration. No. I was speaking rhetorically about a feeling that only movie stars get. But this helps Todd realize that talking through his feelings is a good thing. And he opens up to Courtney about the meeting he wants to go to and his fears that his expectations might not meet the reality. And after this date, Bojack finally gives Todd the apology that he's owed. I got more of you than I ever deserved. If you never talk to me again, I just want you to know that I appreciate it. And... I appreciate you. And this leads Todd to be willing to talk through his feelings even further. And for the first time, to anyone, Todd verbalizes that he thinks he might be asexual. It actually feels nice to finally say it out loud. I am an asexual person. I am asexual. And what makes this even better is that even though he opened up and had this wonderful moment of connection with Bojack, Todd didn't immediately fall back into his people-pleasing ways. He maintained his boundary with Bojack so that they can ease back into their friendship. He learned that he can do things that are best for himself sometimes. I don't know if I'm ready for us to be friends again yet. Oh. Okay. Todd learned to prioritize his own well-being, and with this newly learned lesson, Todd goes to his first ever asexual meetup to embrace this part of himself that he's now learning about. And he even skips out on tonight's big triangle finale with the orchestra at the Hollywood Bowl. Hmm. Good for him. Todd's journey through this episode was tedious and frustrating, but he came out the other side with a better understanding of himself and his needs. And for that, all I can say is... Hooray! And you know, I don't throw that word around lightly. Folks, thanks for tuning in to another BoJack Breakdown. I hope you enjoyed this one. It was really fun to talk about Todd in one of these for once. As usual, let me know below in the comments what episodes you most want me to talk about next. And of course, stay tuned for more. Peace. Johnny!